spiritual successors. In gaming, it's something we've been seeing more and more of this past decade alone, with each having a wide variety of success and failure. There have been so many made throughout this time, all with wildly different developers, philosophies, budgets, and most importantly for this video, inspirations. Those inspirations uniting all of these different projects to answer one question. How can we succeed something established, but through its core values and concepts alone, without using the aforementioned media being pulled from? To put it more simply, how can we succeed a franchise in spirit, and also make it our own through a unique experience? Many different developers have answered this many different ways, with each making it clear to fans where they were pulling that inspiration. Sometimes, it's with so much passion and understanding, it can exceed what it was originally so influenced from, successfully creating the next generation of its genre's niche. Other times, however, it can go disastrously wrong, or unfortunately, not really being able to capture the spirit they're pulling from on their first try. There's never really a guarantee on how these games will turn out in the end, no matter who's working on it or how much experience they've had. But... Sometimes the stars can align. If you have all the founding pillars of an iconic series coming back to make something unshackled from their previous overlords in a quest to prove them dead wrong, no matter what, the result will be interesting. For that reason alone, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and the Bloodstained series in general now, is my favorite spiritual successor, for obvious reasons, I mean, let's not kid ourselves, look at my channel so far, oh my god. Bloodstained was literally conceived because of Koji Igarashi not being able to make the games he wanted to anymore, because of, you guessed it, Konami wanting to go in a different direction. It's why a lot of their previously shown spiritual successors were made too, the companies and holders of these beloved IPs not being used at all, or being used shamelessly, despite the outcry from longtime fans. It's a business decision at the end of the day, and unfortunately it can absolutely destroy creative integrity. That's what makes Bloodstained so unique, so human, so determined. Despite everything against Igarashi, he left Konami, not taking any of their bullshit, assembled the right team and asked the right people, us the fans, if we were willing to give him a chance on his passion project. That chance we gave him. Five and a half million dollars of it. After a long and bumpy development, Element, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night arrived on June 18th, 2019. The influence of its predecessor obvious, but worn proudly, as the series began its own path. Still, Bloodstained and its predecessor are deeply entangled, I mean intertwined, and in my opinion, inseparable. To understand why, we have to look at Castlevania. While the legacy of Castlevania can be separated and organized into different eras, gameplay styles, and even the narrative cohesion of the games if you're a weirdo who cares about the lore, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night specifically takes its blueprint from one specific type of Vania, the Igavania. And if you want to be even more specific, Symphony of the Night, Aria of Sorrow, Don't forget Dawn of Sorrow, and Order of Ecclesia. Arguably the greatest Castlevania games ever made, and to those who've played them, some of the greatest Metroidvanias, period. It's no surprise Bloodstained would take after these games, especially with series veteran and main man Koji Igarashi at the helm, but looking even closer, it's kinda surprising just how much it does. Its main character Miriam, I love her by the way, is literally Soma Cruz and Shinoa doing the fusion dance from Dragon Ball. I guess Miriam should be called Shimoa. Not only in looks, but in gameplay as well, with collecting shards mirroring the power of dominance from the Sorrow games, and her playstyle and weapons being super reminiscent to characters like Alucard, Soma, and Jonathan. This is only scratching the surface. <gasps> Same weapons, same upgrades, same voice actors, same candlesticks, save rooms, teleporting rooms, hidden items, abilities, bosses, gimmicks, side quests, castles, structure, familiars, progression, alternate characters, alternate modes, aesthetic, composers, let's not even talk about the indie great stuff, I'll get to that in a bit! And it's amazing. It all works in the context of this game. Bloodstained is a love letter to Castlevania, all its eras and all its forms. Even the pachinko shit, although that's definitely more resentment than love. Uh, yeah, I'll probably do a video on that one day. Maybe. Maybe. Bloodstain is undeniably iterating right where Castlevania left off. The original game's continuity, anyway. It uses the same formula Symphony that I'd started way back in 1997 because it's been proven to be so successful critically, taking all of the elements that work in these games, a combination of every good idea they've ever had all under the supervision of the genre's brainchild. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, especially if you have a winning formula. And this is all to please that starving core audience, filling the void that Castlevania left behind when it disappeared after 2008. No more new games. 
Castlevania was left abruptly unfinished. And while its temporary replacement, the Lords of Shadow series, is a whole other can of worms, in retrospect, Konami moving on so suddenly halted and obliterated the original Castlevania continuity that had been built upon for 20 years. It sucks, no vampire pun intended, and I don't want to put another abrupt Konami rant in one of my videos, but that's where original Castlevania died. Igarashi and his team kinda reincarnated the entire franchise with Bloodstained. It became a successor of fate. Bloodstained became Castlevania, just as it was. The heart of Castlevania, anyway. Obviously, I think it's unlikely we're gonna be seeing a Belmont running around in Jeebel's demon castle. Oh, damn, never mind. Bloodstained is Castlevania. I knew it was possible, but not like this. Oh my, rest in peace, Simon. I'm sorry you succumbed to the curse. No, but seriously, remember when I said you can organize Castlevania into different eras and gameplay styles? Bloodstained doesn't just continue the Igavanias. The original classic games that Castlevania started with, Bloodstained would continue them as well, and this was always the intention and hope as seen on the Kickstarter page. It didn't end up being a prequel to Ritual of the Night, more of an alternate universe with the same characters, new characters, bosses, stories, everything. It's all more simple but charming as hell, fitting right into the style. While Ritual of the Night would continue the Igavanias, the Curse of the Moon games would continue the classic Vanias, both styles coexisting and complementing each other just like Castlevania did before. It. These influences are so cool, like, come on, okay. Miriam is a Belmont, Alfred is a Belnadas, Jeebel is Alucard, Dominique is Eric, Scrooge McDuck, and Shovel Knight, I think. Zangetsu and Robert can represent Grant, or Robert specifically Albus and Zangetsu Maxim, but I'm reaching now, holy shit. And Hachi. Hachi. Hachi the dog, puppy dog. Ah, uh, he's fucking Dracula, I don't know. We can see Curse of the Moon 1 and 2 refine those NES games to an edge. They do so much right and add enough to make them masterclass platformers in their own right. I mean, Curse of the Moon 2 actually has co-op. Like, I need to try that right after I finish this video. It's classic Castlevania if they just kept adding to Dracula's Curse, Rondo of Blood, even Rebirth. If you haven't played them yet, especially if you love the original Castlevanias and you like what you see, I wholeheartedly recommend and checking them out. It's kind of incredible how much Bloodstained continues Castlevania's legacy with its games and manages to make them unique and genuine at the same time. However, the argument can be made that Bloodstained is in the shadow of its predecessor, and I would understand. But when that shadow hasn't moved for 14 years, only making a failed gacha game, then having that die and then be revived, and then paid out by Steve Jobs' Apple Fortnite mobile killer to have that featured in his local arcade, part 2 is coming once the story is finished guys, I have to review it as a complete package for my sanity, it becomes easier to go in your own direction. One of the things I didn't like about Bloodstained is how close they stuck to Symphony of the Night. I want the story to be more ambitious, I want the characters to be more fleshed out, I want Bloodstained to become its own, I want Bloodstained to carve its own future. And thankfully since Ritual of the Night release, that's what it's been doing, slowly but surely. Curse of the Moon 2, collaborations like with Kingdom and Blasphemous, hopefully more to come on that end. I'd love to see Miriam or Zangetsu give Shovel Knight a run for his money as Cameo King, continued support and updates with new characters, most recently Aurora from Child of Light, I want to look at that on its own if you guys would want to see me delve into it, continuing to fulfill Kickstarter promises, and of course, the heavily rumored, honestly kind of inevitable Bloodstained 2. There's been talks for a long time, but with how successful the game is, and how much a sequel could expand upon, I think it's exactly what the series needs. Hopefully I've convinced you why Bloodstained is Castlevania, why it has its heart and soul, and how in the future, Bloodstained can become something even matching and surpassing passing its predecessor's legacy. The potential and passion is here, and I can't wait to see what the series strives for in the future. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed the new video. I wanted to try a different style with this one again, so I'm curious to hear what you guys think. If this is your first time watching, welcome! I've been making Castlevania videos these past few months on YouTube because it's something I've always wanted to try, and talking about Bloodstain has been a topic I've been wanting to express here for a while, especially its relation to Castlevania. And hey, if you disagree, I'd love to hear why. I will definitely be coming back to this series soon. I have a lot I want to create, and I'm going to try my best to be more consistent from now on. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, or or don't, I'm not your mom. But if you want to support the channel, click all the buttons down there. It really helps a small creator like me. As a great man once said, take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, have yourself a damn good one. Take care, guys. Whoa.